I've been watching this Club Shay Shay interview with Madam President Kamala Harris, and the man starts off. Club Shay Shay starts off by asking uh, Miss Kamala Harris, what do you eat for breakfast? Now, she said, like, eggs and spinach or something like this. But I was, why would you ask? Who in them? Do you want to know what Kamala Harris eats for breakfast? It's like the most softball question in the whole entire world. When they say that they treat black women differently, when they say that they treat women differently, oh, let me show you. I'm watching it right now, okay? I'm watching this thing right now. I'm paying attention to this political uh, conversation because I think we're supposed to be informed voters. And when this person is having a conversation, I think she should be likable. I think that I should like the President of the United States of America. But when she's talking, I, I, honestly, I don't believe anything she's saying. It seems like a contrived story. She's older than me, and I can go back to every workplace. I can name people. I can name situations. I have enough lived experience to have a conversation about my real life when someone asks me a question. I don't have to repeat the question that you just gave me, but she's doing her best. She's doing her best. To, to say the right thing, she don't want to say the wrong thing, and I understand uh, not, not, more, not wanting to misspeak. But when you represent me, I want a person that's honest. When, when, you, do, when you deal with Donald Trump, he seems like an honest person. It's, even if he's full of shit, it seems like he's telling the truth. When she's full of shit, it seems like she's being full of shit because she wants to be pleased. She wants to please you. And so as I watch the way that Shannon Sharp is treating this woman in this interview, I just look at how America treats women differently. You, you woman, you know that America treats you different. You know that men treat you different. As soon as a woman walks into the room, if there are four men, all four men are now competing with this, for this woman's attention. They all want her to say hi to them. And so Miss Kamala Harris, as the President of the United States of America, every time she walks into the room, every man is trying to be uh, generous and courteous and Madam President and bow and curtsy all, all day long, every day. This is the way that she's going to be treated. And I think that, man, I don't know how big your head gets. When you talk about Donald Trump wants to be a dictator and a king, I don't think that we've, our sensibility, American sensibility, our hospitality, being gentlemen and chivalry is going to destroy this nation because if she becomes the president, she's not going to become the president. But hypothetically, if she was going to become the president, then all of a sudden, our whole politics change. Our nation becomes a reflection of this person and she's a stammering, babbling, I, I just I just don't want to and when she gets into power she's going to have the authority to make men do things that she never thought possible and that doesn't even seem exciting I don't, I don't think anyone wants to participate in that type of government I don't think you want that I know for certain I think you can see on my shirt it says that I voted look at my shirt it says that I voted I voted for the winner I voted for a guy Man, she said he had $400 million. He went bankrupt six times. This is Kamala Harris. Because in the interview, I think she's talking more about Donald Trump than she is about herself. And I think you, the American person, you you want to you wanna get to know her. You want her to, man, you want to understand where she's coming from. You want her to be relatable. Here's one point of contention. Because her mother's not a black woman. And so if her mother's not a black woman, what woman is going to tell their daughter who's a reflection of them? You are a proud black woman. You and your sister are proud black women. You can believe whatever you want to believe, but me, when you make that statement, why would your Indian mother tell you that you're a proud black woman? What, what mother even makes that statement? I, I have a black mother. I don't. My parents never told me, son, you're a proud black man. My mother never grabbed me by my face and said, baby, you such a proud black man. Who does that? Now back to this Club Shay Shay interview. He runs so many commercials that it's it's almost unwatchable. I, I, it's not watchable for me already. I had to turn it off and make. I'm still still playing. I, I'm giving him a view. Hey Shannon Sharp, I, I congratulate your journalism. It's not even journalism because you ain't even asking no questions that I want to hear. You start going into the economy and every answer she gives. I've already heard the answer before. All I gotta do is watch another interview and she says the exact same thing on repeat. And when you're that scripted. When you're that tight, oh my God, I don't want to, I don't even want to play peekaboo and see what's inside of there. Girl, you got some skeletons in your closet. Girl, you got some 13-inch Ds in your closet. Boy, them, them things be hanging. They just fall out all over your face. They said, don't ever talk about a woman's sexuality. Why not? Why not? They talk about my sexuality all day. These politicians talk about me all day. They talk about me, talk about me, talk about me, won't talk to me. And when I talk to you, all of a sudden, 
Don't say that. Oh, be, be, be respectful. To whom? And for what? Who is she? She's a person when she had the opportunity, she put black mothers in jail for their children. She did this. That was her policy when she was the Attorney General of California. And so when you have these conversations about politics and politicians, Donald Trump isn't a politician. He's a businessman. And when, he, when we have a conversation about power, I want someone who has the ability to negotiate. And that as a constituent, as a, as a citizen of the United States of America, that tells me that I have to hold power accountable. And so when someone doesn't do something you like, then you either decide to become powerful and challenge that power, or you let power do whatever they want, and they just beat you up, and you can't say nothing because you don't want to do nothing. And so for every person who's afraid to vote for whoever you choose to vote for, if Kamala wins, it's not the end of America. If Donald Trump wins, it's not the end of America. I think America has millions and millions of freedom fighters who are willing to do whatever it takes to make sure that your freedom stays intact. That hell yeah, that's the power of men. That's the power of patriotism and that patriotism and nationalism and all these words. That's the power of men believing in their nation and defending you at all costs. That's the military. That's every militia. That's every uh, community watch. That's every dad. That's every uncle. That's every father. And so what I'm saying is, amen, protect America. And this is just a fact of life. It's not going to change today. It's not going to change tomorrow. And hopefully it never does because you're the greatest American alive.